Hey everyone, welcome to Care Fiction. I'm your host Subhankar. Amazon's The Wheel of Time TV series may have fallen out of favor with the audience, specifically the ones who adored the books, like me. But whether you follow the books or the TV series, you have probably realized how vast its lore and world building are. Adapted from the eponymous book series written by Robert Jordan, spanning 14 books, the series is filled with various mythological references, most notably the Celtic mythology. A pivotal group of characters among others in the series are the Aes Sedai, the magic wielders, and like many others, they are also inspired by a couple of mythologies. So let's look into those. Perhaps the most obvious comes from the Celtic mythology. Hailing from Irish mythology, Ai Shi is a race of supernatural beings comparable to fairies or elves. Sometimes they are also called the kings and queens of the fairies. However, they look nothing like the fairies that we know of today. In fact, they resemble humans in size and appearance. These otherworldly beings are considered to be a distinct race who had interacted with humans over the centuries. They possess magical abilities and are masters of shape-shifting. Tall and stunningly beautiful, they are said to be transparent beings who walk among the world of humans without leaving any trace. Well, that is because it is believed that they live in a parallel universe. Considered to be the ancestors of Celts, the Aishi can be seen as many different things. They are depicted as fairies, elves, gods, demigods, and sometimes fallen angels. In Old Irish, the word she means hill, and hence Aishi means the people of the hills or mounds. And why are they called the people of the mounds? Well, that takes us to their origins and history. You see, there were a lot of races and groups of beings that settled in Ireland, which are mentioned in Le Bor Gavuala Erin, also known as the Book of Invasions. The book, by means of poems and prose, mentions the taking of Ireland by six groups. One of these groups is the Tuathad Danann, who are a race of supernatural beings who represent the main deities of Ireland and constitute a pantheon of pagan gods. Another group of settlers are the Milesians, who were the final race to settle in Ireland. They represent the Irish people. When they encountered the Tuatha de Danann, the Milesians described them as not gods but more than mortal. Soon war sprang up between these two races and the Milesians defeated the Tuatha de Danann. As part of the surrender terms, the Tuatha de Danann agreed to retreat and dwell underground in the hollow hills or she, where they remained as I she. Tales of these beings prevailed in rural Ireland and Scotland and thus the people established a belief in these beings. It is believed that the Aishi protected humans, healed them, and taught them smithcraft. They would march into battles with lances of blue flame and shields of pure white. Aishi guard their abodes fiercely, which could be anything from a fairy hill, a fairy ring, a special tree like a hawthorn, to a particular loch or wood. The Aishi are generally viewed as benevolent or neutral beings. But if you anger them or disturb their habitat, then you are in a world of hurt, with the most common being a curse put upon you and your family. There are also malevolent Aishi, like the Lianan Shi, meaning fairy lover, who is a vampire maiden who seeks out artists and poets, and in return for inspiration, she feeds off their life force. Then there is the Far Darig the evil cousin of the leprechaun. The most notable is the Bianshi, also known as the Banshee, who is a supernatural woman that announces a forthcoming death by wailing and keening. Apart from the Irish mythology, the Aes Sedai may also have been partially inspired from Norse mythology. You know that the One Power is the main form of magic in the Wheel of Time series. It has two sides, Sidin, the male half, and Sidar, the female half. Now listen to this. In Norse mythology, Seder is a form of magic that deals with bringing about changes and shaping the future by weaving new events. So, not only the name, but also the motive sounds similar to the Aes Sedai. And to top that, Seder was practiced by women. But there were also male practitioners, but that was seen as a social taboo. These women practitioners were called the Seder Kona and were sometimes viewed as witches. Seder was associated with both the god Odin and the goddess Freya. So that is all about this video. Pretty interesting, right? Let me know if I missed anything. Thank you for watching and see you soon.